Hello everyone, Loremaster of Sotek here, back with another multiplayer cast. This time, I'm not playing. Uh, we had Zach B. Saints uh, send in some replays, because he's awesome and wants to help out. And I'm trying to get back into uh, casting and playing multiplayer on a very regular basis. I did attempt to record some multiplayer battles tonight, but unfortunately, all the games I had weren't super entertaining or my opponents surrendered about 30 seconds to a minute into every game for some reason which was weird because i wasn't like expressly winning those games it was just like we were starting to maneuver and then they would quit out so i took it as a sign that today i'm gonna cast somebody else's game so we've got flying taco as the lizardmen versus uh zach as the high elves both these players if you watch our saturday Tabletop tourney tournaments are, of course, uh, very iconic members of the community. They've both played numerous times, and I believe um, they, they both tend to do extremely well. I know that for sure, but they play quite a bit of multiplayer. We'll go ahead and go over Zach's army real quick, uh, just because this battle starts off very, very fast. So for the High Elves, we've got four units of High Elf Spearmen, three units of Sisters of Avalorn, which are probably my favorite bow-based unit in the game. Then we've got a unit of Phoenix Guard. Um, oh no, make that five units of Spearmen, excuse me. Then two units of Silverhounds with Shields. The Armory is led by Teclas, who has Net of Amatok, uh, Enfeebling Foe, and Regrowth. Then we have two units of Aurelian Reaver Archers. Meanwhile, on the Lizardman side, we've got three units, three, four units, there we go, four. Units of Red Crested Skinks. We've got the Pakopak Cohort, which are probably... Uh, I don't know if they're my favorite Lizardman coloration. Legion of Chalk was up there, too. Then we've got, I think, two units of Normal Skinks. A unit of Skink Cohorts with Javelins. Two units of Croxagores. And a Red Crested Skink Chief on a Stegodon. With Warrior, uh, Warrior Crest and the Opal Amulet. Giving him some really nice defensive... Uh, abilities and combat spells and then last but certainly not least we've got the star chamber guardians who are defending lord crook way over here the big man himself the first generation slon the deliverer of itza and the bane of demons so without further ado let's get into it so already we can see that there's some pretty good skirmishing going on between the uh from the high elves they're just getting some nice early fire into the skinks who you will see kind of run out, but they're not fast enough to catch Aurelian Reavers. And Aurelian Reavers can fire 360, so there's really not too much point in chasing them. He's just kind of keeping them away. Because at the very least, if you chase them, you can kind of make them less accurate if you're able to move around enough. But if you can get behind a couple trees, you can also mitigate the damage a bit. We do see that this unit ate a little bit of return fire due to the giant uh, twin giant blowpipes on the Red Crested uh, Skink Chief's Stegodon. Which, if memory serves, are known as Sotex Sting. Because the giant the giant bow that the regular Stegodon has also has a Sotex something name. But I can't quite remember what it is off the top of my head. In any event, uh, the Lizardmen definitely do not have the upper hand when it comes to just long-range skirmish. They're pretty light when it comes to their missile fire. So they've started to move forward. And the High Elves are pretty much relying exclusively on the Aurelian Reaver Archers to do a lot of their early game damage. But they're uh, pretty gifted at that. That being said, here we do see that the Sisters of Avalorn have open fire. The Skinks will be able to mitigate some of the damage with their shields, but there's kind of an unfortunate thing here where they've got a little bit of an overlap going on, so some of that damage is going to be hitting additional targets. But we do see the first deliverance of Itza coming in from Lord Croc. It looks like it's probably a small blast. This one actually does manage to catch the Sister of Avalorn a little bit, but it's only a small blast and they uh, are able to survive the damage for the most part. Another one's going down here, but one thing uh, Zach's pretty dang good at is dodging these blasts. This one actually does catch a mobile part of the unit, but here he gets a beautiful catch with the net of Amatok, which is going to hold the Pakopak core in place just long enough to not only break these Red Crested Skinks so that the, these guys can rebrace in preparation for the Cav Charge, but also allows a lot of really nice damage to come in there. Meanwhile, we do see that a unit of Silverhounds of Shields has wiped out the Red Crested Skinks on that far flank, but the Lizardmen are starting to push through here thanks to the overwhelming power of the uh, 
Croxagors, and of course the Red Crescent Skink uh, has smashed in through the line himself, is likely looking to disrupt the battle line and take out the Skinks. Lord Croc has thrown down the, uh, shield, the uh, Supreme Shield of the Old Ones to provide some extra bonuses over here defensively, while the Pakapak -Pak, uh, cohort starts retreating from the battle line. The Star Chamber Guardians have no problem tearing through those spearmen in the front line and are going to be able to move forward to hopefully reinforce the Red Crested Skink Chief to provide him with that lovely uh, Guardian save and some sweet physical resistance. Meanwhile, the Red Crested Skink has moved forward and is catching Sisters of Avalorum, which is really, really good. The High Elves, one thing that they tend to suffer from is that they don't have a ton of units on the field normally. Um, they usually have... they're usually outnumbered. So as a Lizardman player, one of the best things you can do is break their units and then chase them down after they're broken. Here we do see the Star Chamber Guardians have engaged in Teclas, which is really, really nice because it holds them in place so that the Sisters of Avalorn, who have significant armor piercing, uh, are firing into their flank, which is going to do so much damage because they don't have their shields presented, so they're not getting that 30% damage mitigation, and they're just taking tons of damage. But more importantly, we can see Zack's Micro is awesome this game, and he is constantly dodging Lord Croc. Because Lord Croc is definitely a character who... If you can get your enemy to hold still and drop bombs on them, he will do a ton of work and get in a ton of damage and can single-handedly win games by himself. But especially against armies like Elves, where all of their basic infantry are fairly quick, um, you have to. it's really difficult to get a lot of really big catches if you're not running an army that's able to just lock people down and hold them down. And this Elf army, because it's mostly made up of cavalry and... Um, missile infantry is basically in a perfect position to fall back uh, constantly then reunify and resume firing so we see that the croc swords are continuing to eat shots over here the star chamber guardians have been broken due to constantly being chased down by the phoenix guard because they were trying to catch the sisters of avalorn because they couldn't just afford to sit there and get shot but at the same time, the Phoenix Guard moved faster than them, so the Phoenix Guard were easily chasing after the unit and butchering them. Now, with this flank completely collapsed thanks to the fall of the Star Chamber Guardians, Lord Croak is completely by himself and exposed. And although he does mitigate a normal, a pretty substantial percentage of missile and range fire, or uh, the magic damage, I should say, and the missile damage from the Sister Ravalorn, he is flammable. So a good part of his resistances are being mitigated thanks to uh, um, the flammable weakness, which the Sisters of Avalorn are able to exploit. It makes them a really good pick for this. And once again, here we're just seeing that the Lizardmen are doing a really good, or the Elves are doing a great job. Zack is doing a wonderful job of making sure he's not holding still long enough for that explosion to go off. Because Lord Croc is very, very powerful, but ultimately, in, unless you're playing vampire counts, it is, it is certainly possible to have ways to deal with him. Vampire counts, I totally give a pass for not easily having answers to Lord Croc, just because it's not that hard to guard him with, like, two Carnosaurs, and then there's absolutely nothing anybody can do to him, um, as far as the vampire counts are concerned, unfortunately. Uh, I imagine I would not be surprised at all if he gets nerfed in the up uh, next upcoming patch, which is a shame, because I think his power is actually not too bad against, uh, like, elven armies, but... Then again, people aren't running double slon, and I believe this is like a tourney game, um, based on the way the match was listed. But overall, we can see that the Lizardman army is rather deeply in shambles at this point. Lord Croc is still around, but I imagine he's running fairly low on magic at this point. And the Red Crested Skink Chief, despite the natural physical resistance or uh, missile resistance he gets for being a character and having a 22% ward save, he is taking a ton of damage from those Sisters of Avalorn. They're almost out of ammo at this point, but the only thing really left on the field is a very, very wounded of, a unit of Star Chamber Guardians, a half-health uh, Red Crescent Skink Chief, Lord Croc, who's at uh, about 60% health, and then a Skink unit, which is gonna be pretty useless in the long run. See here, we see a really, really another nice, good response by uh, Zack. That looks like it's either the medium or large cast, and it pretty much evaporates those Phoenix Guard that got uh, caught. But overall, the unit managed to pretty effectively dodge it, because Zack was paying attention and made sure he just didn't waddle into it and stay in the fight. So pretty much at this point, the Lizardmen are completely surrounded. The Elves have done a good job of making sure that some of the slower units were run down to the point that they shattered. 
or uh, were just run off the field entirely, because really the only thing that was capable of escaping their superior uh, movement speed on average is the Skinks. But even then, the Aurelian Reavers are so gorgeous. Uh, they're such a good unit, because early game, they're perfect for uh, taking care... Uh, they're, early, they're perfect for like doing little skirmish battles, but they're also super efficient when it comes to late game at just chasing off enemies. Here we see a net of Amnitok coming down from Teclas, and although a defensive aura has been popped by the uh, Skink Chief, he is going to take a ton of damage from those arrows. And at this point, the elves don't really need to bother dodging. Even then, they still dodge uh, some of the spell, but they don't need to worry about it too much because there's really not enough left on the battlefield here, I think, for them to effectively be in deep danger. We do see that Stegadon is getting surrounded at this point. He does run into battle, doing everything he can to bring an end to the elves and goring a few people here and there, but there are still those flaming magical arrows coming in, which are going to do tons and tons of damage as the uh, guardians of the Everqueen do what they can to make sure this dinosaur invasion is put down. Meanwhile, Lord Croc is continuing to drop his little melee bombs on people, but unfortunately, that's, there's just way too many people for him to get through it. And Zach just did a really good job of making sure that none of the uh, bombs were really, really effectively able to land their hit. And at that point, the balance of power did swing over. The Skink Chief shattered, leaving Lord Croc as the only thing left, so the Lizardman player went ahead and surrendered just because he's unbreakable, so you can't, uh, you have to kill him normally. But he still had a fair amount of health left, and it would have just taken a bit. So, great game to both players. Um, I actually really, really enjoyed watching that fight. Lord Croc in my circles, um, the people who I talk to about multiplayer, Lord Croc has kind of become a really terrifying force. Um, you, you know something's really powerful uh, when it has a unique exemption in the uh, King's Cup rules, which for Lord Croc is basically you can't bring another Slon with him because at that point he gets so much magic plus the stacking ward saves that he can just dominate everybody's face. So it's kind of refreshing to actually see Lord Croc get defeated. A uh, really good game by both players, and ultimately it came down to Zack's micro. If Zack had not dodged ever, like, Zack literally ended up dodging 90% or 85% of Lord Croc's um, deliverance of Itza's. If he had only dodged, like, 50%, or if he had let some of those really big ones hit then Lord Croc could have easily turned this game around in favor of the Lizardmen. They needed, the High Elves needed to make really, really effective use of all their units and make sure that Lord Croc could not get above his kill counter because you can see here that they basically have the same number of units and Teclas didn't have any big, like, super bomb spells. I mean, he had Regrowth, which is really good unit, a uh, really good spell for sustaining your units, but, I mean, ultimately, he did such a good job with his Aurelian Reavers and Silver Helms and, of course, the Sisters of Avalorn. I mean, two of them ended up pouring most of their ammo into, like, Croxagors and Pock Pock and Lord Croc and Red Crested Skink. So they didn't get a lot of um, kills, but they did a lot of damage. And, ultimately, I really just think it came down to the Jukes. But, really good game for both players. Uh, hopefully, I can get some more games out of uh, myself playing as I try and get back to being decent at the game. I think I might have a multiplayer stream in the near future where it's me playing and maybe we just play a lot of games, either quick battles or King of the Hill style, I don't know. Or maybe I'll just show up on one of turn streams, that might be better. In any event, thank you all for watching. I have, uh, God, there's so much junk coming out very, very soon. And of course we got Who Would Win returning later this week. Be sure to go check out that video. If you haven't already, it's the video released before this one. But Who Would Win is returning uh, with some little new snippets to it. And there's another series that's going to be returning as well that I think a lot of people will be super excited for. So thank you all for watching. Catch you next time. Bye.